perfection. Stardew Valley's greatest accomplishment. There are plenty of videos on YouTube explaining what perfection is and how it's achieved. Some even go further and do it in two in-game years. But completing the massive list of challenges to achieve perfection is no easy feat. It will test your resource management skills, along with your concentration to complete every challenge the game can throw at you. Only once you've completed everything are you allowed to reach the summit. Most players turn away, some challenge themselves to complete it, and while I, eh, give me a day. To lay out some ground rules before I get started, I'm using the glitchless speedrunning rule set, so I will not be using any mods or glitches to complete this run, and because this is a speedrun, I don't care about how many in-game years it takes me to finish this. I will also be completing the community center instead of Jojo Mart to make things a little bit more interesting, and I will be using some third-party tools like the Blades Predictor and the Mousy Pounds Predictor to help. I also I will not do this in one sitting. I do not hit myself enough to sit in a chair for a day straight. This run was done over the course of four days, with the timer only going when I was playing on the file. And if it's not clear, this is not a guide of how to achieve perfection. Now with the now with stuff boring out of the way, let's begin. The start of the run was pretty normal if you've ever watched me do a community center speedrun. I planted the parsnips given me by Mary Lewis and collected wood for a few chests. My goal was to rush the mines on the first good luck day I got. In the mines I wanted to get to floor 40 ASAP to start farming for iron and money for strawberries. By the end of the first mines day, we reached our goal of floor 40 and took home a lot of loot that we found along the way. With floor 40 unlocked, I can just repeatedly enter and exit floor 41 looking for iron so we can craft sprinklers. I will need farming level 2 to craft them, but I can get that with a few extra potatoes. After gathering enough resources to craft about 25 basic sprinklers, I started pushing for the lava floors to start mining for gold, as well as setting up floor resetting for diamonds later on so I can afford all the strawberries. It took me two days of mining to get the floor 85, and once I did farm a little bit of gold ore, I started resetting floors 55, 65, 75, and 85 looking for diamond nodes. I do this for money, but the reason it works is that floors with multiples of 5 can still spawn diamond nodes and gem nodes. No other types of nodes can spawn on these floors, but the reason we use these floors in particular is due to how fast they can be reset. It is very easy to switch between all these floors and check for a diamond node, and then reset them all by returning to the top of the mines. Also note that this does not work in multiplayer due to the mines floors resetting differently. After doing this for about half an in-game day, I ended up with 3 diamonds, which was good enough for what I needed. After selling all the gems I had, I woke up on the egg festival with about 10,000 G. After prepping the farm, I entered the egg festival and bought about 100 strawberry seeds, and 2 flamingos for good luck. After absolutely destroying Abigail in the egg hunt with 17 eggs, I planted all 100 strawberries and started hibernating. The goal of the first year isn't to complete anything related to perfection. The thing I need most is money. We need 12.5 million G for the golden clock and obelisks alone, and we need money to get that much money. The first year will be to set us up for success later on. We can knock out the harder objectives by brute forcing them with money and resources we'll have later on. I ended spring around the two and a half hour mark. Between the egg festival and now, I upgraded the backpack, I upgraded my pickaxe to copper, and removed the majority of trees from the farm. I also set up a quick oak resin farm that we'll use later for kegs. With entering summer, we got enough farming XP for farming level 6, so we can finally craft quality sprinklers. And with the gold ore we farmed earlier, we crafted 13 of them. For the crops that we're going to be using in summer, it's pretty straightforward. We'll be using a mixture of melons and blueberries just like we do in community center speedruns. Blueberries for quick cash to help pay for preserve jars, and melons that will jelly for long term cash. I buy 100 of each and start sleeping days for the crops to grow up. Once fully grown, I harvested the blueberries and sold them to buy resources for preserve jars. I continued this until the end of summer and ended with 25 preserve jars. I also bought a barn, a big coop, along with upgrading my axe to copper. After planting wheat on the 26th to replace the melons, I entered fall at about the 3 hour and 20 minute mark. I harvested the wheat I planted in summer which was only placed so I didn't have to retail every spot again in fall, and bought about 300 pumpkin seeds. Yes, pumpkin seeds. For those about to say why pumpkins over cranberries, don't they make more money? And then copy and paste what the wiki has to say about it? You aren't wrong that they can make more money in certain situations. Currently I have 25 preserve jars and that number is only going to increase now that we have the artisan perk. A pickle pumpkin is worth 966 gold each, where a cranberry jelly is only worth 280 gold each. 
You would make a lot more money if you did jelly every single cranberry, but I have about 300 crops for harvest, so jarring 600 pumpkins is a lot more reasonable than jarring 3,750 cranberries. For those curious about the math, the total profit for 600 pickle pumpkins after the sea cost is added is about 520,000 G. Where if I jelly 600 of the 3,750 cranberries and then sold the rest for raw, the total profit would only be about 350,000 G making pickle pumpkins vastly better profit-wise for me given my situation. After hibernating through fall with only a few detours being animals so we can unlock the greenhouse and buying more resources for preserve jars, I ended up completing the vault on fall 28th, which also happened to have a monster floor on floor 101, so I farmed it for void spirit kills to get the savage ring. I enter wintered at about the 4 hour and 15 minute mark and finish the greenhouse on the 7th. After moving all my sprinklers inside, I prep the soil for starfruit. Starfruit will be used to make the rest of the money we need for the run. I also finally got the Prismatic Slime quest around this time, which when completed gives Monster Musk. This will make farming mobs much more efficient. It will also help with my next goal to reach combat level 8 to craft explosive ammo. I want to do a Skull Cavern run soon so I can acquire some extra money as well as get Prismatic Shards to acquire the Galaxy Hammer and Magic Rock Candy. After killing enough Void Spirits and Dust Sprites, I reached combat level 8 and started to hibernate the spring. At this point I had everything I needed to do a full skull cavern run along with the burglar's ring and savage ring for later. So on the next good luck day I went. I would show the sped up footage of the run but I spam paused in skull caverns to mid max the amount of time that I had in it. So instead here's the highlights of the run and the ending loot. 11 months welcome back to the Sturgeon squad and your emotes is what our goal is. I'm going to really not use many staircases on this run. Uh it's only going I need to get the 20. Uh, I could probably still go on this day, to be quite honest. Figure out where the ladder was. While I was going, right? You, did, you get it at combat level 8. Oh, there we go. There's one of four. But yeah, I would like to have two by now. Floor 100 by, by 6 p.m. Wowee. Absolute garbage. Hey. Now can we get more? Hey. Hey. Their galaxy sword. Cool. For lacking the equipment that I'm used to in Skull Caverns, it wasn't a bad haul. 715 Iridium Ore is decent, along with getting enough Prismatic Shards for what we needed, as well as a bunch of other resources. For the rest of spring, I just smelted Iridium for some extra cash. With the blacksmithing perk, these bars sell for 1,500 G each, so if I were to sell all the bars I made in the last Skull Caverns run, I would have made about 214,000 G in Iridium alone. This is a nice chunk of change that will help boost starfruit production. Before the end of spring, I went back to Skull Cavern one more time, but not to get Iridium Ore, but to get an Auto Petter. A new 1.5 item that will automatically pet animals for you. This is very important for later for how I will be approaching friendships later on into this run. Most who do the CC route will struggle to get an Auto Petter due to only being able to acquire one through chest floors in Skull Caverns or a random drop from boss enemies in the hard mode mines. I will also obviously be going with the first method here due to not having the hard mode mines unlocked yet, along with it also being easier and more consistent. All I needed was a few staircases, which I had about 60 of them. I got these from crafting them with extra stone I had, along with trading jades for staircases at the desert merchant. This is also the reason I wanted a magic rock candy. Every time that you enter a floor past level 9 in Skull Caverns, there is a base 1% chance for it to be a chest floor. This is affected by luck, and for each plus one luck you have, it adds an extra 1% chance for these chest floors to appear. So with magic rock candy going, and on a good luck day, we can reach about a 7% chance per floor for a chest floor to spawn. It's a 1 in 27 chance for the chest to contain an auto petter. Before you say the math doesn't add up, there's no way that this will guarantee an auto petter when you will only see about 4 to 5 chests with 60 ladders on average. Which you would be correct if I couldn't just reset the whole day to gain everything back and then do it again until I get the auto petter. Floor layouts, chest floors, and chest contents are not set to the day. It's randomly determined when you enter the next Skull Cavern floor. 
So yeah, I can just reset the day until I get the results I want, and after about 15 minutes of resetting, I got the auto putter. With that, we ended spring year two at about the seven and a half hour mark. In summer, I expanded the farming land with more sprinklers from resources we gathered in Skull Caverns, along with planting starfruit for the big profits. In summer, we also started catching the required fish we needed for the CC, so we can get to Ginger Island by the end of the year. Later in summer, I finally set up a deluxe coop in two silos. My plan was to fill a coop with rabbits, leave it for a few years with an auto petter and an auto grabber, and end up with a bunch of iridium quality rabbits feet to gift NPCs with. This is the reason for the auto petter. It was so that I never had to interact with the rabbits to gain friendship points with them. As to why rabbits feed over other gifts, it's the only universal love gift that you can get in masses and in iridium quality. I also didn't need a crazy amount of them. My plan was to only gift them on the NPC's birthdays. The iridium quality does matter. It gives an extra 50% friendship bonus on top of the 8x multiplier birthday gifts give. In total, Iridium Birthday Love Gift gives a whopping 960 friendship points, which is just shy of 4 full hearts of friendship points. This with the combination of gaining 2 extra friendship hearts from completing the bulletin board along with the extra luau friendship points, it makes it so I really only need to gift each NPC about 3 times total. I left my rabbits to their own devices and entered fall, to catch the remaining fish which is all I had left to finish the entire community center is what I would like to say, but unfortunately I screwed up and forgot to get the sunfish. Built it out of my mind for forgetting a simple fish, I decided it was a good stopping point for the stream and headed to bed. Revigorated after a good night's rest, I started to stream again, even after the humiliation of forgetting the sunfish. After gathering all the other remaining items I still needed to finish the community center with, I then started farming geodes in the mines. This was so I can unlock the sewers so I can change my professions around. After gathering about 40 of each geode type, I set off to Clint's to open them. Geodes are not as random as people think they are. They are not affected by daily luck, nor are they randomly determined when you open them. What determines the mineral you get out of them is what the seed of the file is, and the number of geodes you have previously opened are. I used the Mousy Pounds predictor to help determine what order I should open the geodes in, and after a few minutes I had the full mineral tab filled out and donated. After selling all the wine and jelly I had, making about a million G in total, I headed to the sewer to buy Krobus' star drop, along with talking to the statue to change my farming profession. I'm changing my farming profession from artisan to coop master. This is to befriend the rabbits faster as well as gain coop master's hidden bonus, which is a bonus chance of the rabbit's foot dropping as iridium quality. When the rabbit has max friendships with you, it gives an extra 16.65% chance for iridium foot to drop. This significantly helps speed up the collection of all the rabbit's feet we need for the run. After doing a few more harvests of starfruit in the greenhouse, it's time for us to just sleep it till in spring to acquire the final item we needed for the community center. We did have to make one stop at the night market to get the fish and a truffle from the traveling cart, but other than that, we're done with year two. After pleasing grandpa with our hardly progressed farm, I went to catch the sunfish. It only took me 11 and a half hours to finish the community center. Only nine hours slower than my PB, but hey, I had to do a few extra things. On one of the days waiting for the boat to unlock, I went to the Adventurers Guild to buy a galaxy hammer. The slammer is great and all, but it's nothing compared to the galaxy hammer. Once on Ginger Island, my first order in business was to unlock the farmhouse, so I went to the volcano to collect cinder shards and walnuts. My first run yielded 42 cinder shards, which is a pretty low amount, but it's enough to enchant my hammer, which I was lucky enough to have a seed that had artful on the first weapon enchant. This halves the hammer special attack cooldown, and with the combination of the acrobat profession, it puts it on a 1.5 second cooldown, allowing me to instant kill anything that gets near me. I also combined my magnet ring and glowstone ring to get the extra magnetic effect. I collected every walnut that I could on the farm to repair the farmhouse with before passing out. This was so I can do more volcano runs on the next upcoming days. I was doing these volcano runs to kill magma spirits for the monster eradication goal, as well as for cinder shards to upgrade my equipment. After a few days of volcano runs, my ending equipment was a galaxy hammer with the artful enchantment and forged with three rubies, a hoe with archaeologist, and an axe with powerful. My rings were a burglar's ring combined with a savage ring, as well as a magnet ring combined with a glowstone ring. At this point, I'm repeating the process of checking both Key's quest board and the special orders board every Monday and doing the given quests, while at the same time gifting rabbit's feet on birthdays and harvesting and replanting starfruit. I did this for the remainder of summer and fall, so here's a quick gifting and quest montage.
I did make a few stops along the way to the Stardew Valley Fair and the Spirit Eats Festival so I can collect both rare crows, as well as I managed to get enough galaxy souls from slimes in the hard mode skull caverns to unlock the infinity gavel. In winter I did more of the same but I added fish pond and nipping. Basically the item you receive from fish ponds is based off of the location of the fish pond, the day, and the seed. I used blades predictor to always give the results I want. The reason I caught lionfish earlier is due to them giving the tiger slime eggs. You gain fishing XP from fish ponds based off of the item sell price, and tiger slime eggs sell for 8,000 G. This translates to about 330 fishing XP per egg. This makes leveling up from fishing much faster than just fishing for it. I ended year 3 at about the 20 hour and 30 minute mark. It may seem like we don't have a lot of time left, but I basically have all the money and resources I needed for the rest of the run at this point. With that said, I still need to do another full year of gifting, so here's another gifting montage. At the end of winter, I bought the golden clock, and then entered year 4 shortly after. I let my Twitch chat vote for who I would marry, who ended up voting for Penny, the only person in the town who hates rabbit's feet. So I gave her melons to match hers, and we were happily married by fall first. At this point, I basically have all the friendship points I needed for the rest of the run, and I finally started fishing for all the remaining fish I needed. I also started growing spring forge seeds on Ginger Island to get the remaining forging XP I needed to hit level 10 forging. Once I got the star drop from Penny, the last things I needed to do was two monster eradication quests, cooking every single dish, crafting every single item, shipping every single item, a few more artifacts for a museum, and building the remaining obelisks. For crafting and shipping every single item, I basically hoarded every single item I got along my 5 year journey, so I was pretty set there to finish those off quickly. As for cooking, I started growing every single crop on Ginger Island after I finished getting Forging Level 10, so I was almost set for cooking as well. By late spring, I had everything I needed to craft, cook, and ship every single item. Afterwards, I found a nice slime infested floor on floor 51 in the mines and farmed it for the final monster eradication quest. I was also only missing three artifacts, two of which were the strange dolls so I could quickly get those through the secret notes, and the last one was the trilobite, got him from the beach, and with a little luck I got it pretty quickly. With that, I checked the perfection tracker because we should be at 100%. Well, I guess I missed a few walnuts. Luckily, I knew the ones that I forgot, which were the muscle shell ones, along with the super obvious one that I missed up north. Now that the perfection tracker says 100%, Penny should be awaiting for us at the summit. And with a final time of 28 hours, 26 minutes, and 27 seconds, I achieved perfection. I hope you enjoyed the video. It took a lot of work to make, so it would be appreciated if you could leave a like and subscribe. I also stream all these runs on Twitch if you want to see it live. Anyways, thanks for watching, and peace!